The Russian Revolution was a period of political and social change in the Russian Empire, starting in 1917. This period saw Russia abolish its monarchy and adopt a socialist form of government following two successive revolutions and a bloody civil war. The Russian Revolution can also be seen as the precursor for the other European revolutions that occurred during or in the aftermath of World War I, such as the German Revolution of 1918-1919. Bloody Sunday or Red Sunday was the series of events on Sunday, 22 January 1905 in St. Petersburg, Russia, when unarmed demonstrators, led by Father Georgi Gapon, were fired upon by soldiers of the Imperial Guard as they marched towards the Winter Palace to present a petition to Tsar Nicholas I.E. of Russia. Bloody Sunday caused grave consequences for the Tsarist autocracy governing Imperial Russia. The events in St. Petersburg provoked public outrage and a series of massive strikes that spread quickly to the industrial centers of the Russian Empire. The massacre on Bloody Sunday is considered to be the start of the active phase of the Revolution of 1905. In addition to beginning the 1905 Revolution, historians such as Lionel Koshin in his book, Russia in Revolution 1890-1918, view the events of Bloody Sunday to be one of the key events which ended the Russian Revolution of 1905. The October Revolution, known in Soviet historiography as the Great October Socialist Revolution, and in the anti-Soviet historiography as the October Coup was a revolution in Russia, led by the Bolshevik Party of Vladimir Lenin, that was a key moment in the larger Russian Revolution of 1917-1920. It was the second revolutionary change of government in Russia in 1917. It took place through an armed insurrection in Petrograd, now St. Petersburg, on 7 November 1917. It was the precipitating event of the Russian Civil War. Stalin, who headed the party after the death of Lenin, introduced firm emergency measures. He believed that rich peasants and traders in the countryside were holding stocks in the hope of higher prices. Speculation had to be stopped and supplies confiscated. In 1928, party members toured the grain-producing areas, supervising enforced grain collections and raiding Ekulaxiai in the name for well-to-do peasants. As shortages continued, the decision was taken to collectivize farms. It was argued that grain shortages were partly due to the small size of holdings. After 1917, land had been given over to peasants. These small-sized peasant farms could not be modernized to develop modern farms and run them along industrial lines with machinery. It was necessary to eliminate Kalaxi, take away land from peasants, and establish state-controlled large farms. What followed was Stalini's collectivization program. From 1929, the party forced all peasants to cultivate in collective farms kokos. The bulk of land and implements were transferred to the ownership of collective farms. Peasants worked on the land, and the kolkhoz profit was shared. In spite of collectivization, production did not increase immediately. In fact, the bad harvests of 1930-1933 led to one of most devastating in Soviet history when over 4 million died.